welcome to Behind the Curtain, episode number 32. I'm Joe White, and you are... I know, I'm not Katie. Wait, wait, wait. What happened? Where is Katie? I don't know. <laughs> I'm Kristen Collins. Well, Kristen, actually, Katie is ill today, unfortunately, cannot make tonight's episode, so She'll we have Kristen Collins coming in to rescue the That's day. Right. Literally, you. last second, calling you up, saying, please <laughs> come in. Please come on yes. down. And, and, uh, and I said yes. And thank no. you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for, for joining us. So how did you find out about ACT and how did you get involved with uh, Actually, I just got on your mailing list and then I saw an opportunity to audition for um, some of the plays that you had last fall. Yeah. And, um, or this spring rather. And yeah. so, um, so I went and auditioned and, yeah. and you guys were great. So I just joined. And you've been hooked yeah, with, with been this Yeah, I've been hooked ever since. since. Yep. So you played a role in, the, in our past show. Yes, I played. Two Acts of Murder. That's right. I played a jingleette, jingleette number five. Did they go in high but order in that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, I like to think I'm number one in your hearts. So. <laughs> <laughs> jingleette number five. How was that experience? It was great. Yeah. It was really great. It, it got me the opportunity just to be back on the stage and and performing with like-minded mm -hmm. folks and a uh, really fun opportunity too. So I had yeah. a blast. So yeah. you would encourage so people out there who are interested right. in coming out and helping in any capacity? Absolutely. Any capacity. Yeah. You don't have to have experience. We'll show you how to do it. And uh, right? It's fun. It's fun. And it's a great it's group fun. of people. Believe me. It's Believe a blast. It, it's it really is it a blast. Is. It's great stuff. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing mm -hmm. this fall. Speaking of our show, do you know what we're doing this fall? Yes, what? what we're doing, what? so I'm told, is we're doing this really cool concept called Gate 19. And from what I understand, it's like little vignettes, little mm -hmm. scenes mm -hmm. um, that are at a, uh, a terminal at an airport. Yes. And so how the lives of these folks inter intersect yes. at an airport. Is that, is that true? That is true. But in, okay. the, in the rehearsal part, you mentioned that I came up with the idea. You didn't do that. Oh, yeah. That, when we were live on true. TV. I totally forgot so we, that's, that. okay. that's okay. But did you, no. you did come up with that concept? Well, no. It's, 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 no, it is. I, I always have a theme of the show. A theme. Okay. But what, what I love about what we do is we, we get together and we go to a lot of our sponsors. Like tonight, after our show tonight, we're going to be filming. We're going to be going to where are we going? Going to Hanto's. Hanto's is a great uh, restaurant that supports us. Yeah, they have Love ACT them. night. We'll all be there. And we get around and we, we eat a lot of their good food. And they have some beverages. Yep. They have karaoke. And we sit down yeah. and we write ideas down about this. Yep. So I think and the that's concepts. that's how this came about. And we just yep. get there. And we have the, I have the concepts, but everybody gets involved. It's a really a group effort. So. Yeah. And you've come up with a lot of good stuff. We can't reveal some of the things because right. what we want to do that when we're on stage. Right. But exactly. you came up with some really good stuff. Like Remember like this one? Yeah. My script and that, that you've, one? you've <laughs> and, the, and this one that script? you've read all the red marks through that one. Oh, that's right. You did submit a script, right? Yeah. Let me find it. Okay. Well, no, it's maybe got, it's got an opportunity to be there as well. On stage. No, it's got a shot. It's got a shot. But no, it's no. It, but actually, it is fun to, to sit there. It was there. just fun to try, even though I've never written a script full. Yeah, and actually, I, I, a scene <laughs> from end to end. So it was really fun to submit it and see what happens. But so. it's what is great about it is, is that a lot of people do that, and then we we re review it as a group, and uh, you know we ask each other questions. What do you mean here? What do you try? And sometimes you don't know. You're writing something yeah. down, you don't know. Yeah. But it's kind of cool. So I, one of the things I love about the the new material that we write, write and create, is everyone gets involved. Uh, the writer, they, but you have to let go a little bit. You mm -hmm. can't just say this is this is how it's got to be. Perfect as you is. have to let yeah. you have to let it go. Right, so okay. So got we're it. gonna we're gonna talk <laughs> about that at Hunto's, but uh, we're gonna make sure. And she you're has gonna a couple sing. I know you're going on stage. You're gonna do your song. Which is what is that song? <laughs> what, do you know uh, what the song is? You've lost is? that loving feeling. That's what I've yeah. heard. Yeah, I've yeah. lost it. I can't find it. I'm, look, I'm looking for Hopefully it. Hopefully you'll right find now. it at Hunto's. Hopefully I find it at Hunto's. Yes, on. Just in time to be on stage singing it. Yes. Okay. So, so we talked about the fall show. Yes, the fall. And we show. know it's called Gate Nineteen. Gate Nineteen. Uh, we know it's in December. It's in December, yeah. and the auditions in, are in September. Oh, you good? You were really yeah, good. I'm pretty I like good this. at this. Yeah. So, when is it in September? Is it going to be where? Uh, uh, it's September the open call. September twelfth. Open yep. call at seven o'clock here. And where's here? And we're at WACA TV. Yes. Two hundred Butterfield you know Drive. Me. So, and but, but if they are interested yeah. in they can email us okay at ashland community theater at gmail.com and just say you want to come down and read and we we go through the scripts and i mean i remember doing two acts of murder 
and the cast that we're going to be talking to in a few minutes, I remember we had that script and we went through the auditions and we cast people and we pretty much changed the show almost completely because <laughs> yeah. everyone got else got involved. Yeah, yeah. so you're, it's great. You can sort yeah. of be organic in that way. But what I, what I like about the open call is just come down, mm -hmm. right? If you have any in inkling at all about you know, being a part of this group, just come down and see yeah. what it's about and audition. It doesn't, it's not as scary as I thought it was going to be. No, we're you know, not it's scary It's actually people. a really warm and welcoming group. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so come down. And we not only need actors, we need people to help put on a show. It takes a lot of people to do yes, it. Yes. We have a great technical director and a great stage manager, but they need a lot of help. And uh, they're willing to uh, educate uh, and train and become part of the technical yeah. group. So you so don't have to have experience, nope. is that what you're saying? Not at all. They'll train you on how to do that. Not so at all. Another opportunity. Yeah. There's so Great. many opportunities. And what I like about it is the things that we're doing here is it's Ashland Community Theater. It's not just about putting on the show. It's about the whole process about going from the, the writing, the, uh, mm -hmm. rehe the uh, open calls, the auditions, the uh, rehearsals, and then to Tech Week and then putting the show on. But mm -hmm. there's also the ACT nights at Hantos and Stones and many of our other sponsors that we get to go out and be with each other. So it's a really good yeah. spirit, good community. It really it's is. It's fun. Yeah. Thank you for having me be a oh, part of it. Oh, we love it. We love it. And thank you for so much for coming down and, sure. and uh, being part of our f ACT family, as we call it. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so only a couple of things I want to touch base before we, we get to what we're doing tonight. Okay. Um, Katie and I just came back from Minnesota. That's right. And we were very fortunate enough. So oh. I'm hoping that uh, Barbara can insert some of the wonderful pictures that they took of Katie, myself, and Barbara winning uh, the, the award from Hometown Media. Congratulations. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Katie That's and I awesome. won that for uh, writing, directing, and producing the show called Therapy Sessions. And uh, we, it was very nice. We went out to Minnesota with Barbara. We had a fantastic couple of days. And uh, we celebrated. It was a great ceremony. And uh, great met a lot of good people mm -hmm. in Minnesota and a lot of great people across the country that do the same mm -hmm. things that we do. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, similarities. And then from that, uh, Barbara came back and mm -hmm. said, you know, we're going to be doing a project that we want us to film that Barbara is producing and that Katie's going to direct and, and uh, Connor Donovan and Todd Carter are all part of it. It's called, we have to do a scene from Back to the Future. Mm, cool. Which yeah. one? Which uh, scene? Scene 41, if you, for those who are not remembering. <laughs> it's the scene that uh, Doc Brown okay. is hanging from the clock tower oh, trying yes. to get the connections together. Yep. And uh, wow, McFly is sitting in the in the DeLorean, yeah. and he's going to try to get the thing up. So oh. Barbara was, uh, we were very fortunate to get Connor Donovan to play Marty McFly. I mean, oh. I, we had to beg and plead him because <laughs> he was he's he's a shy guy, and I don't know if he'd ever come out of that shell, but. He, he is going to play Marty Good. McFly, and that's going to be great. Good. And then uh, Thanks, I unfortunately Connor. cut my hair, and I, I'm going to play Doc Brown. Oh, so I good. Gotta, I'm going to use your hair. <laughs> just can I, can I borrow your hair? <laughs> sure. Yeah, just, just give it just back. Give it back? <laughs> okay. You heard it. It's on film. We got that. Okay. So that we're filming in the next couple of weeks oh, in, in the center fun. of Ashland. I don't know exactly. Barbara's working on all the logistics. I think mm. it's either going to be on the top of the library if we can get the permission, or we're going to be oh filming cool. right in, in the center of town by that green clock in the when center of town. When is this going to happen? We're filming August 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. Okay. So this so may already be airing around that yeah. time, but uh, yeah. Oh, that's so great. It's going to be fun to see, and it'll be yeah. kind of kind of neat, and uh, going to get a little Ashland on the map, because nice. there's about 45 or 50 different companies around the, um, the, the states. That well, and I love that it's this. about the clock tower, because right, aren't... Go figure. Ashland's the clock the town, the clockers. Yeah. So that'll be Perfect. fun to do. Perfect. Uh, nice so job. Let's see. So we've done that, done that. Okay. Usually Katie keeps me. Okay. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do tonight. What are we yep. doing tonight? We are interviewing the cast of The Connection. And The Connection was uh, uh, right. act one of our spring show, spring Two Acts of Murder. Yeah. And we'll have the that actors here. That you, I feel like yeah. you adapted that. Yes. From a. It was a story. From a story. And we'll talk about that. Talk about that. Yeah. Yep. That'll be fun. Very and, good. And uh, we'll have the cast here. Uh, all of them should be here tonight. They're all scheduled to be here. So we have Great. those seats set up. We'll be talking to them. Um, outside of that, I think, uh, other than watch the calendars on uh, Ashland Community Theater and wait, which is we are all in this together. And you can go out and support many organizations in town. I think last month we had Nadine Heaps on here. We talked about our sponsors and how much they mean to us. Mm -hmm. And not only 
they contribute their time and location and uh, efforts. Uh, they promote our programs when, when we're not even there. They're telling people, go go see the ACT show, go see the next show. So tonight we're actually going to go to Hanto's, but in September we've got nights out in, in, in uh, Stone's Public House, yeah. in Hanto's, in Mexico City Taqueria, yeah. a lot of places around Ashley. 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 House. Yeah. Yes, and yeah. so, so we will um, well, let's continue supporting our sponsors that way. Yes, so, thank you. Yeah. All right. So with that, why don't you sit back, relax, and watch The Connection, and then when you come back, we'll have the cast here and we'll interview them. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's irritating. He said he'd be here at 2.30. It's now 2.34. It'll be 2.30 as well. Oh, and me. And me, but I, I can't wait around all day. I, I've got a ton of things to do. <laughs> what was that? It sounds like the elevator. Maybe it's Riker at last. Well, that's certainly not Riker. Riker! Uh, Mr. Riker, I came here to meet him. Uh, is he here? Seems like we all came here to meet him. All of you? Yes, all of us. Evidently, all of us are here at 2.30 to meet him and not just not me. Is this Office 2804? Yes. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to check and see. Make sure. Don't think stuck! What? Let me see that. That is odd. It, 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 it can't be locked. I came in and then I went out to check the number and the door opened then, so it wasn't locked then. It, it, it must be stuck somehow.
think there's another <laughs> way in, is there? Well, sorry about the state of this old office. I really couldn't arrange a better place of being Saturday afternoon. <laughs> Did I miss? <clears throat> a bit late, sorry about that. But now that I'm here, let's get settled. I would like to jump right in. <clears throat> Listen to your writer, or whoever you are. We've been waiting here since 2.30 for you. And you yeah. are... Uh, well, this has been interesting. Now I have all the information that I need, so do you know what I'm going to have to do now? I'm going to have to buy you a drink at the bar across the street. What? To make up for being late, of course. Okay. Uh, I could use a good stiff drink. Oh, allow me. A certain technique I learned after the fourth time that I was stuck in here. Gentle. Very gentle. Not in any sort of panic. Now go on down to the bar across the street and I'll be down shooting the five drinks. Seems like I left my jacket record. Seems like you did, Mr. Tobel. I'll be in the bar downstairs waiting. Oh, when will I get my prowls? We'll discuss it then. Say. 
to seek to bring out the best, the worst in me. <laughs> oh, God, do you think they were scared? I don't know about the rest of them, but you should have seen Togo just now. I mean, after today, he might actually think he did it. Good. But we need more. Right, we are running out of leads to give you a coat. Well, since I convinced Deacon to let me serve as the lead investigator, we can give him whatever information we need to keep him off of our scent. You know, we could blackmail these idiots by telling them we'll expose their brothers to Deacon. Yeah, but we don't really Shh. Plus, uh, we could continue to build Deacon for more expense money to find April's kills. <laughs> I mean, we could, but do we really need to build him for more? Between what we got for the ransom, what I'm getting for serving as a lead investigator, don't you think we have enough? Oh, well, I guess I'm just a girl who likes the finer things in life. Thank you. No, I want as much as I can get out of that old bastard. I like the lifestyle we lead. I want to keep it. What? Now you're starting to get just as greedy as April was. Well, you know, it was a shame that poor little sweet April just didn't want to go through with the fake kidnapping and enjoy all this money with us. Mm. She was starting to get out of conscience. Jeff. About everything that she did to her father. Jeff. All of those other people. Jeff. She was going to turn him in. She was going to tell him everything. I know that. Okay, we could not have that. We had no choice but to let that bomb go off. Poor thing. Welcome back from watching The Connection. Thank you so much. We have the entire cast here. Yay. Thank you so much for coming down. We have Mike Patas, Randy Davinsky, Cindy Bell, Stephanie Hopkins. We have Linda Slocum. Thank you so much for coming on down today. Oh, and, and Joe. And the, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank I don't know why I sang that, but okay. Good. I like it. See, it was the jingle at number five from, yeah, the, right. from the first show. We talked about that in the opening. So. Thank you so much for coming on down tonight from your busy summer schedules. Thank you so much. But, um, we just watched the episode. The audience just watched it. Do you guys remember being in the show? It's been uh, two months now. It's a distant memory. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it blocked it. Now, most of, some of you have got the DVD. Did, you, did anybody watch it yet? Part of it. You did? Okay, you did? What did yeah. you think? It was good. Yeah? Yeah. It was, it's interesting to see it from that angle and to see it a couple months later as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you watch it? Yes, I did. I watched it with my daughter. And? And it, it was good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And I got to see things that I didn't get to see being on stage because, mm -hmm. you know, you miss certain reactions that people have and whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was different? Uh, well, just that I could see people reacting to what, was, what I was saying and mm -hmm. stuff that I didn't always get to see because people were behind me or whatever. Mm -hmm. so. You saw yeah. the rabbit ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shadow puppets. Yeah, Cindy was always the one that kept us during the rehearsals laughing. With your yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm really funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's good. So what did you? Uh, so uh, you just got your DVD. I did. Yep. I mailed yours. Yeah, you got yours. I've got mine. Yeah. It takes me a while to That's before okay. I like to look at myself. I, I just, yeah. yeah, I watch. Actually, I watch that show every day. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, I can see that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it fills uh, up my entire day. So, Joe, I wanted to ask you connection. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How did you come up with the concept for that story? Well, yeah, I didn't come up with the concept. There was a story from Graham Jones that was uh, that that I found. It was a story about people that were trapped in a room and it was a little bit of a mystery a little bit a couple of twists and this character Riker came in and and I, I read through it and I and we were trying to come up with some scenes for a mystery show and and I said well this could be really something that we could develop and work on mm -hmm. and uh, I reached out to the author and I said you know we're a community theater and I was wondering if we could use your scene as a theme but you know, we're a very creative group and we want to kind of expand on it and change it. And he goes, if you pay me, I'll do anything, anything oh. you want, basically. <laughs> Which is completely different than what we did the, the year before. We had Neil Simon and we couldn't like change a word or line or anything in that. 
So it was very nice, um, and it was it was just more than just like giving was money. Was it more than a million dollars, though? <laughs> uh, a little bit, a little bit. I gave him drachmas, uh, Greek drachmas, and uh, and lira, lira monies. So he was all set. Good. But now he was actually very open about that, and um, when I gave him back the the script, he really liked it. He thought it was really a good uh, good story, and uh, very pleased. And you wanted to Which get a version of the script? I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> version 97. The, the last one. So what I ended up okay. doing is that after what we ended up filming, I actually watched the film, uh -huh. created the script of what that turned out to be, uh -huh. and sent it back to him. Uh -huh. And Did then you send him the film as well? I, I, what I had to do was I had to get his permission. We had to get his permission to film it. Oh, okay. And then now that we just got the permission to air it, which is what we did today, uh -huh. so that'll be on Still TV. Million and now we'll get a million, yeah. So well worth it, but yeah. but uh, it was a, a, a theme. But this collective wonderful group here mm -hmm. contributed dramatically mm -hmm. to each of their characters. Mm -hmm. So I think even though Graham wrote it, it was an idea that we started. They completed the wonderful picture. So I wanted to thank everybody up there for that wonderful experience. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, I think we were given sort of. Some of us were given characters, and then some were some characters added to from the the characters that were in the all the, scene, were all all in there, the right? same were all in so there. So we were given like a starting place and a situation, but then it sort of unfold ended up unfolding in a different way, yeah. and um, and we had to add things to our characters. Your character, I think, really shifted with just like a line. I think really changed a lot of who your character turned out to be. Which one? Randy's. No, I know, but what, what is, was there a line? It was, say? it was your line. It was the, just like oh. the others. Oh, yeah. Adding that <laughs> in all of a sudden, because before it was, you know, maybe, you know, he's also this innocent and he's been wrongly accused and everything. And then just adding that little twist in, it, it made, it, it kind of, I think, drove all of us to make our backstories just that little bit more nefarious and mm -hmm. it's less, oh, these poor people who have been, you know, toyed with by this character. It's more, oh, all of them are awful people. <laughs> They're all not very good people. Not very likable, right? No. Yeah. Did you find your character likable? I loved my character. <laughs> Why? What do you like about it? What was your character again? What was the name of your character? Harriet Katsky. Yes. Yeah. My last name is Katsky. Good. Yeah, just yes. <laughs> Sometimes we got mixed up about that. Oh, no, I, I don't know if she was likable to the audience, but, but, but no. I Why was like... Because I thought she was strong and independent and smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like that. Definitely. That's great. What would you like about your character? Uh, she's, she's diabolical. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's really, really fun because I only had maybe a page and a half of that version of that character. And then the whole rest of the show is this pretend, pr this even more pretend person uh, that this character has created. And it was just really fun to really flesh out that ending scene first and really understand who that character is mm -hmm. and then kind of backtrack for, okay, then what characteristics would she choose to present herself as mm -hmm. in order to elicit sympathy, but also to kind of just be in the background and not, and be able to just observe everyone. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes she just couldn't help herself, it seemed like. Too. <laughs> and you weren't doing what I wanted. <laughs> and what about you? Um, well, I like that my character was a very strong, protective mother. Um, mm. I, I can kind of identify with that being a mother myself, so um, I liked that part of her. And uh, I liked the interplay I had with his character because... I decided that he reminded me a lot of my ex-husband, so I <laughs> threw a lot of my <laughs> my. Your ex-husband in the show. Yes, not my ex-husband. No, not in real life. Oh, just <laughs> say, I want to clarify that because I think show, yes. I knew you were thinking the other. Oh. The ex-husband yeah. of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Randy. Um. I well, I, I get to start out the show, so that's nice to set this the scene and to react to everybody as they come in. And um, uh, I think I try to, you know, try to be a sympathetic character, even uh, while being annoying in certain ways. And then 
the middle scenes that was um, for whatever reason I, I my character mostly I think gets along with people and tries to um, except for Togo he just <laughs> they just instantly dislike each other yeah. and um, and that that was always fun to like sort of play off that um, dislike they're always pointing out what the other person mm -hmm. did wrong or um, you know your Togo's trying to accuse everyone else and I'm making sure that he's under suspicion as well mm -hmm. and um, and so I just try to figure out why you know why what my character's up to and and we, we worked on you know different ways of you know there's things he has to do too and just sort of figuring out mm -hmm. sort of kind of ticks mm -hmm. and or just compulsions that he has in order to get him to where he needs to be Mike? Riker is powerful, not in a violent way or any kind of physical way, but his power lied in his choice of words and his tone. Mm -hmm. And he would, you know, flip, you know, turn one light off and turn another light on just with those words and that tone. And that was really fun to play. There was like five different Rikers that mm -hmm. kind of got rotated through. Mm -hmm. So that it was sort of helped make it sort of who who really is the, the villain in this. Right. Right. It's me. And, yeah. oh, and, <laughs> and you know, and in, in a way, Just I got to play forgot. like almost like sub characters. Yeah. Like yeah. I get to yeah. play very business like mm -hmm. Riker, but mm -hmm. then later I get to play kind of like interrogator Riker mm -hmm. and then. Romantic Riker, there's just a lot to work with, so that was a lot of fun. A lot of Rikers in a short amount of time, because you were yeah. in on half, there in the half scene the show, until right. half the show. Right. Right. And he, he was at every single rehearsal, every single time watching Standing in the closet. Standing in the closet, <laughs> waiting to come out with his briefing. Once in a while we locked him in, but not too often. <laughs> just, just, for just, just for Just for that reality for Actually, I was looking through the hole up in the ceiling. Oh. <laughs> That's a different story. For you, as an actor and a director, that. Well, I, I take uh, a lot of, I give this cast a lot of credit for adapting to that. It wasn't originally intended that way, but I, I, I look back at some of the scenes that everybody contributed to. I really do feel this is a very collective directorial thing, even mm -hmm. though the name was there. I think I've said it in the past in other interviews that this cast, to me, was the the reason that this was a successful thing. Not the writing or the directing, it's what they contributed to it. You know, Cindy came up a lot of times with different suggestions and different things Mike did, Randy did, everybody came up with suggestions on some things. So they helped me get through this. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't ideal to be on the stage there, but when I was there, I, I thoroughly enjoyed being on there with this with this great cast. Uh, dealing, you know, the, the interactions that I had with you, uh, mm -hmm. obviously with you, and I noticed that during the scenes that my interactions with the mm -hmm. ladies of the, of the show were only derogatory. So he yeah. was not a very nice person. Everything anybody has ever said Shocking. was like, I, dog, what kind of dog? And like, got stupid ideas that. And mm -hmm. when you do them, like, really, my interactions with the ladies was very negative. And, mm -hmm. and even when I talked to it was really I was just positive with the guys. Was that, it was positive. <laughs> it was, <laughs> well, maybe, wait, maybe, 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 maybe it's not gender specific. Maybe I gotta think deeper. I think it was, it was more like, dismissive with the women. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe. With yeah. the men. You were yeah. more engaged with the men, yeah. but you weren't. Nice you didn't even know I was behind you the first. Like, oh my God, what are you doing here? Dog? A dog? You're here for a dog? So, but I just find no. I just back to the direct. I think they were they contributed uh, more than than I could have collectively. So. But it was a great, great, great time to be a Togo. To be Togo. Great. So, what is, so what, okay, you got something? No. Well, I was just going to ask, um, how many of you have been in ACD productions prior to this, or no? I was. You were. Yes. Which one was? I was actually in the previous one, Dinner Conversations. Oh, okay. So, uh, which was also. Um, a ensemble uh, piece and I was actually I played the same character through several different scenes they were all set in a restaurant so oh. um, that was that was really mm -hmm. a lot of fun and I worked that's when I got to work with Joe yeah. Yeah. in my, most of my scenes two yeah, of them. So, so for the pie throwing one which yes yes you weren't in that really one really <laughs> that three, one was fun three pies three pies three pies in one scene yes oh, nine pies God. through the through the run of the show oh yes God. Plus rehearsal. Plus rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> in whose face? Funny Porter. 
Yes. Really? Bunny Porter played the, uh, the writer of Bunny Porter of the... loves me, so it's yep. okay. <laughs> what kind she of... She's very... Um, whipped cream. Yeah, just whipped cream. Very yeah. fun. So for the first timers then, what was your experience like being a, in an ACT production? I was really... I was, was really impressed with the sort of collaborative process that it became. I'm sort of used to the idea that you just, you get a script and those are your lines and you figure it out. Even if the line doesn't seem to make sense with how you understand the character, you just do it and you make it work. Um, but here it was really, it wasn't just, hey, I, I have an idea. It was put out right away. If you think something's different, tell me. If something else comes out of your mouth and it feels right, say that instead. It just, it really allowed us, I think, to really develop our characters on our own time and to figure out how they interact with each other. And in a way, it almost started to feel a little bit like improv at times mm -hmm. because you knew sort of the beats you needed to hit. And I think it really helped with the memorization process too because the words that came out of my mouth felt authentic and it didn't feel like I was trying to remember words on a page but it just made sense with what this person would say so that was that was very unique i think i think it was definitely an environment where we all felt comfortable bringing ideas to the table whether or not they ended up being used and that, that was nice yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's great mm -hmm. oh right, so what is, what's everybody <laughs> working on now is anybody working on it randy what, what's your next project i heard something about a film uh well it's it, it's actually an old i mean it was I did the filming of like uh, two summers ago, actually, but the film is now being released. It's an independent film called Russian Doll. Russian Doll. And it's, uh, it's, it's sort of a, it's a thriller. It's a, it's a, um, a detective thing. That we, and I just have a small, I have a small scene in it, but it's, um, I get to play a kind of a law and order scene. I'm a part of a married couple whose mm -hmm. daughter is involved in the case. And the detectives are interviewing us. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was a first movie experience, so it was really interesting to um, to, to deal with the cameras and the you know uh, shooting the same thing three times in quick mm -hmm. succession mm -hmm. with uh, with just you know three hours beforehand you know to and, and only three hours because you're waiting for the previous scene to get done and you know all the yeah. things that go into a mm -hmm. production. I learned an awful lot about it, and mm -hmm. we've been waiting to see you know where where, where whether whether it would come out and when it would come out and so on. So it's actually premiering tomorrow in the film festival in North Carolina. Are you gonna go? I, not to North oh. Carolina, but then the follow-up uh, screening will be in mid-September uh, in Worcester. There's a film festival in Worcester. Oh, well, that's great. So you'll send us the information. I'll let people know on Facebook. Yeah, let us know, let us know. Uh, yeah. If you know when that is, let us know. We can yeah. add it to the uh, scroll on the bottom. Yeah. Of the and it's gonna be the Hanover Theater, which is like a pretty oh, big wow. space in Worcester. So, space. so Please um, let us know, so I'd love to. That'd be great. And then I'm also actually doing locally, um, my next actual project will be um, in the ensemble of a musical called Blood Brothers. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's going to be in Canton. Um, oh, yeah. so When's that going to be? Uh, it'll go up at the um, end of October, early November. Nice. Yeah, last nice. week of October and first weekend of November. Okay. And okay. it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty serious <laughs> yeah. show. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Anybody else working on anything that's coming up? Cindy? Um, I have a couple things. Right. So I'm directing The Queen of Bingo, which is a story of two sisters, one night at bingo, and sort of the unfolding of all of their um, issues and their history together mm -hmm. and some resolution of the things that they're struggling with. Mm -hmm. So, um, And the audience gets to play bingo. In oh, right before really? intermission, <laughs> yeah, we hand out those uh, the paper bingo things yep, yep. and the, and you the get daubers. The blotters, the daubers, yeah. Well, they're expensive, so I have to yep. see if we do daubers or whatever. Yep. But yep. yep, so they play a game of bingo, cover all one full card. Oh wow! Um, that's so cool. And where is this going to be? It's going that's up? in Sturbridge at Stage Loft. Nice. And then in about the same time you go up, I'm in the Savannah Sipping Society, Ooh. which is a southern play. <laughs> <laughs> at uh, the Walpole Footlighters. Oh, oh nice. Yeah, great. Very nice. Yeah, I'll go along. Great. Anybody else in anything? Or Ryan? I'm taking the summer off. Taking the summer <laughs> off. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what I did. Are you doing anything? This? I'm taking the summer off. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Although I've heard a little scratch. We talked about that yes. earlier. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot. I think people contributed to the, I got something from Mike and uh, some other people who were contributing to the Gate 19 show. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. sort of in the midst of going through the finalization of that and then uh, we'll uh, sort of open call in, in September. So hopefully you guys can maybe try to come out for it. So. Um, question for you. Um, how does it feel five. being the co-host in the <laughs> number five? Jingle at me. <laughs> <laughs> number so one feel, in your heart. This is what you my keep new saying tagline. that all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I like that. Um, how does it feel being uh, interviewing people? I like it. You like it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. So you, Basie and Katie, are gonna nick, kick yeah, me out next time. Yeah, we have to it out now. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple more questions before yeah. we wrap up. One is. Um, we, we had some feedback from, from the uh, EMACT dash group, and they came back and said that they would have thought it would have been nice to have the scene done in more of a confined space, mm -hmm. meaning a tighter space, sort of like the way we rehearsed here in Wacker versus on stage. What do you guys think of that concept, or that, that theory? Would that make, make sense? Would it, would it have worked? What do you think? Um, yeah, I think it would have made sense to, I know that the, the energy that we had rehearsing in this space was was really heightened because you were just you know bumping into each other and you're in an uncomfortable mm -hmm. situation with complete strangers um, and obviously when you have a really long stage like that you have to block for mm -hmm. the stage that you're on and so you sort of the characters are able to actually sort of retreat from each other mm -hmm. and I think I agree that maybe some of the the tension and the uncomfortableness might have been sort of carried through a little bit more if you know you're being interrogated by someone or you're being accused of something and you really can't go to the other side of a large room but you only have the small space that you're in mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to react to so I think yeah, I think that's a really that's valid comment for that because I was thinking about potentially filming that mm -hmm. in, in a in, in maybe in the studio yeah. and it being in a tighter space so if we get through that I'll be calling you guys up and trying and, and that's different as Randy can attest to it's a different feeling mm -hmm. like unfortunately with uh, like we could film a lot of it without writing it right he doesn't think that that can be be here for a lot of time we can mm -hmm. get a lot of that stuff done so but, uh, I liked him in the closet <laughs> 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 like he should be there anyway he just should he? so that like to keep the oh, idea yeah, going instead yeah. of being watched I think you right. might be right would we'll yeah. you just lock him in there, him in there? <laughs> mm -hmm. that worked for you <laughs> I, I think it'd be I think playing Riker in the film version would almost be like a more natural inclination because mm -hmm. I one of my notes that I gave myself was that I would trail off on certain lines mm -hmm. like or yeah. you know I wasn't maybe mm -hmm. projecting as much as I was mm -hmm. directed to mm -hmm. so with film you don't have to worry about yep. that as Absolutely. much and you can yeah. use more of those you know there's more flexibility and more yeah. variety with tone of voice and volume and yeah I know that that was a common note for for our scene was that it yeah our voices were were a little bit muted and it's hard because you're playing a very sort of mm -hmm. intimate scene and it's mm -hmm. a very intense scene. Yeah. And it's, it is a little bit, I don't want to like burst your eardrum projecting right next to your head. Yeah. Wow, you really look <laughs> sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I think that that scene in particular, I think could be, would be really interesting to, to see on film because you can also, just by being able to also play with the perspectives of being able to actually move a camera around and being able to hone in on particular things and you know maybe being able to see really tight close-ups of your reaction mm -hmm. and response to the sort of mad ramblings of this <laughs> woman you <laughs> tied yourself up with. <laughs> and and I, what I love about the film versions of things mm -hmm. is the reactionary of the other characters listening to somebody say yeah. something. So you don't always have to be on you know, I always thought when you did, my first thing I did, I thought you always have to be filming the person speaking. Mm -hmm. It's actually the opposite. You want to be filming the other people's reactions to that person mm -hmm. speaking at times. Yeah. So you want to get that combination. So there was so many things that were going on stage that other people could see. And if you're talking about it being a mystery, mm -hmm. and you can give people mm -hmm. more, when they say, why didn't you have a cell phone? We could look at it and then you could mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. be a little bit different <gasps> than, you know, why didn't you have that? Maybe we could figure out why that was even a, a plot part, but. Right, and you one can. Red herring. I, it was a long yeah. ago yeah. one that yeah. Yeah. So just yeah. stayed in. With film, you could yeah. call attention to that just with a shot where 
they actually show her with her cell phone, and that's all you see. Whereas if she maybe had a cell phone or in a pocket, someone in the audience may have seen it, but yep. maybe not 100%. Yep. And then yep. later, she says she forgot it. Yep. But in the film version, you'd, you'd remember. You'd remember it. Yeah. We it definitely saw definitely the cell phone. Yeah. So it creates a different kind of mystery yep. intention. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that would be very interesting. Good point. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. So um, what was your favorite line in the play? And to say, what was it to say? Oh, mine was, yeah. uh, do you think they were scared? <laughs> <laughs> it, gives, it, it tells everything about that character because she's, she's not thinking about, did we get the information? This isn't just a task to get something done. This is fun. She enjoyed it and mm -hmm. she really, she wants to hear from somebody else, you know, this validation that she was able to really manipulate and mess with some people. Yeah. So it just, yeah, it gives it gives this little extra twist that it's not just goal oriented, but she might actually just be a psychopath. <laughs> you like playing the psychopath. It is really <laughs> she, really, she, she blossomed. So, <laughs> the thing of it was is when I got the revised script and you said that you wanted me to play Patricia, yep. I had read through, but not to the end. And I emailed back and said, yeah, I really like what you've done with the character mm -hmm. and sent it. And then I was reading it with my mother at the time, and she and I were reading it together. And I'm reading it, and I get to that last scene, I jump out of my chair and say, what? <laughs> what did I just sign up for? But it was so exciting, because I'm reading through it, and I had no idea that that was coming. And it was just all, I just, I got goosebumps, the idea wow. of being able to play such a polarizing character. Because the original and, part of the story, okay. I don't know if you know, they, they know it, but we did the reading, we ran through the whole thing, Stephanie came in and read for it, and I said, okay, I gotta do more with this character, right? Mm -hmm. In my mind, I'm like, I gotta change this, and that's what came into my mind. I said, let her be the plant for the whole mm -hmm. thing going on, and at the end, she became the Riker thing. It was originally supposed to be, Riker goes in, leaves the bomb ticking off, leaves Tobal in the room, and it explodes, and Tobal dies there. Mm -hmm. And that could have worked, and I think it might have worked as well, but I feel that what we did as, as a team collectively changed that to the ending, made that uh, switch. And a lot of people were, some people said there was something with you, yeah. they couldn't figure it out, mm -hmm. they thought you might have been it, they definitely oh, thought they you. they thought you were April. They thought, they thought, a lot of people thought you were April, That's a lot of people thought you were, were, were part, there was something wrong in there. They, everyone thought, everyone thought <laughs> Togo was just a da blah blah. Yeah. But, uh, What's yeah. your favorite line? Mine? To say. Oh, there's two of them. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> and then, that is the stupidest idea I have ever heard. Those two. I wonder why. I don't know. <laughs> and you know, they, they came both so naturally to me. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I didn't even yeah. have to rehearse yeah. them. Yeah, it's just coming right out. <laughs> Cindy, what about you? I think mine was something like, the, uh, who knows, maybe I'll come into another windfall. Because I think that oh. showed, again, that little piece of maybe not so much innocence here mm -hmm. yeah and I like that twist mm -hmm. yeah. which by the way you contributed I did yeah, so maybe that's why I, I like have it. a question but not the way okay. my favorite line was uh, what part of not talking about it anymore didn't you understand <laughs> <laughs> because I got to finally take it out on you that you were getting on my nerves mm -hmm. and I, I think you you and I talked about that line too mm -hmm. Randy? Um, yeah, it was always fun to set that up, too, and, yeah. just, uh, <laughs> and then not to give it away. I, I think I had a, a kind of line that sort of evolved out of it, which was the, um, what I need to know is, and, and then I would ask something, and, and, you, would, and uh, you would always be reacting like, shut up, too. And, and, I mean, the same, it's a, we, have a, we have a scene that's similar to that of where I'm asking about, well, why, why is that clock ticking or so on? Or why is the, what, we want to know about the kidnapping and you're mm -hmm. like, no, stop talking about it. <laughs> and so my character's penchant was always to just, just open up the can of worms oh, that nobody yeah, else wants opened. And, <laughs> and that he shouldn't want but opened either. Really but that didn't really need but to he be opened. Doesn't, he doesn't have this, <laughs> the self-reflectiveness about, um, he, he has to go there, even if it's even if it's not in his own interest. Yeah. Thank you, by the way. That was very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mike? I think if you asked me this question before we did it in front of a live audience, I would have picked a different line. Oh, really? Interesting. But one of the lines that we improv again was when I incredul incredulously put my hands on the desk and say, 
oh my god, this is what you've been doing? The whole time? <laughs> and I think it's my favorite because like the first time we had an audience, they just burst out yeah, exactly. yeah. in laughter and it, it, it didn't let the scene take itself too seriously mm -hmm. and it definitely, mm -hmm. I, I don't know, it, it allowed the cast to pivot more into the, oh, we were overreacting. Exactly. Like, yeah. We just got it such just, a reaction out really, of that. It that. really yeah. flipped that. Because yeah. we were struggling to say, yeah. how do we go back to this laughter now? We would yeah. say, oh, there all that tenseness, you really yeah. broke it back. Yeah. What was it before that one? Yeah. Curious. Um, maybe one of my lines with you as Togel towards the end, like where I, you know, like mm -hmm. stroking my beard, like, did you know that Frau refused to ever have his work displayed in Me oh, Mexico? It's so Political good. Political conflicts no. with the government, of course. You know, very it's like, such a, oh, he's God. very much on the high ground. He's just kind of yeah. like pawing around, like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Manipulative yeah, it's stuff. It's great. Yeah, love it. So one last question before we go. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned uh, how collaborative everything was, and mm -hmm. I, I know in my mind what the. What do you feel you contributed to this production that you think that is your stamp on it? Because uh, I know you all have, and you've brought something to either the scene, the character, or a combination. Um, I don't know if anybody, if you, if you don't have something that you can think of off the top of your head, I know what they are for each of you, but. What do you think you contributed to? Mm, as an actor, and this being one of my first times doing acting like in a show in, a, in some years, I was very focused on trying to make my character's physical tendencies as realistic as possible. And I feel like that was kind of something I was always, at least for myself, looking out for, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. so that it just felt natural. Um, something, I don't think it's really the most important thing, but it's, it's something that I think is interesting and fun about acting and, uh, was, uh, we had done the scene the same way, like a hundred times where I started by coming in through the door and, um, and, and we, and we just kept doing, we, it was just the way it was done from the yep. very beginning. And, yep. and, and then one day just driving here, stuck in traffic, I said, well, what if he starts what if he's already in the already in the the office? Mm -hmm. And because later on somebody else is already commenting about you were the first one here, so it could have been mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so that even yeah. it, it did two mm -hmm. things. It it shifted. It, it kept the repetitiveness of the office of coming through the door. Mm -hmm. it, it mixed that up a little bit, mm -hmm. but it also created this extra seed of doubt of, well, because he's already there, uh, you you maybe he's there looking, but maybe he's also setting something up, it just created an extra seed of doubt. Mm -hmm. And it's just a small idea, but we had done it a completely different way. Mm -hmm. and, by, and when we did that and changed that, it, it, I thought it just, um, it, it changed the, the, yep. uh, the opening around in, in a way that was, mm -hmm. that really worked and just, yeah. I don't know, it's like, why didn't we do that? Why wasn't it like that the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was one of the two that I thought of with you with that one and the, the fact that we worked out, how do we you know, get you and I into each other's faces. And we did that very well over the desks. And yeah. I think we, we both thought about how do we do that without because not attacking each other, mm -hmm. but the desk was the barrier between us. And I thought that you know, your idea with that, you know, making sure the desk be part that was as well. And with you, I'm just gonna go back, is, was the, the combination of you know, the adding those words in to get that levity back in really yeah. sh changed it. You had to change that scene many different times on your own. Mm -hmm. You had to get the tension in, you had to get levity in, you had to get tension back in, mm -hmm. you had to like let us down again about, oh, take you for a drink. <laughs> then you had her, and so you really had it up and down. So you brought, you brought a lot of those big suggestions. Um, I think <clears throat> just trying to make it believable that my character actually could be suspected mm -hmm. of of killing April, having to work in that, okay, I am so protective of my daughter that I really mm -hmm. could kill somebody to protect yeah. her mm -hmm. um, if she's being bullied, so I think that. Didn't you bring in the struck her, hit her line? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. gonna say that, yeah, it's a, it's a difference. And we, I think we sit next to each other, what's the difference? Like, yeah. what's the, but I think that does, yeah. it distinguishes you as a mother, and I think yeah. you brought that character out mm -hmm. as a mom. Like you came across as a mom, and I think the audience felt that that's, I, yeah, if my daughter was like in that situation, I would do what I need to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like maybe our scene with, with Riker was 
just because we were here before and oftentimes also mm -hmm. after working on just this page and a half of dialogue, but it, the dynamic between those characters really shifted and our backstory really fleshed out. It was mm -hmm. super complicated and very modern and hip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, I feel like, yeah, it kind of, those, those characters really sort of, it, it gave all this sort of extra, this little extra layer to them um, at the end there, which was really interesting. It's their characters that I would like to follow and see sort of what, what happens next with them. Because there's mm -hmm. a lot there. You brought the sweater, you brought the book, you brought the glasses, you brought the nerdiness in yeah. there. <laughs> and then I think you brought the, the, the new... Yeah, that costume was fun. <laughs> you told me red yep. and something that would be a surprise. Surprise when they are, and there was. Yeah. When people were yeah. back in, <laughs> that was they fun. were like, it, oh! It was such, especially after the first night getting the reaction, it took so much effort to not just be like, <laughs> just like play into it. I had to still keep it like yeah. somewhat in reality. Yeah. Cindy? Um, I thought a lot about how to make the characters, each one of them a suspect. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that was yeah. some, I brought, I tried to bring that into the yep. writing. Because um, I wanted the audience to not just think Togo. Right. right. And right. I wanted the audience yep. to really kind of you know, I just think that's more interesting and more fun for, mm -hmm. the, for them when they're guessing. So, um, and I think as a result of that, it did bring in a little bit of our darker sides, yeah. which, which yeah. I liked. I think yeah. a lot of the darkness really kind of came yeah. out of yeah. some of, because it was, it was just really these dark. little, yeah. these just little lines of, well, but then what if they said this? And mm -hmm. it was just that enough to be like, oh, yeah, okay. I just had some think. sympathy, yeah. but then, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and I think I brought a director's eye to some of it. I was going to say that one of the things that you helped me with tremendously is you know, looking at some things that were going on on stage that I couldn't see that you were able to see, especially their last scene. Mm -hmm. I think their last scene was, we, I, I loved that part so much because it was the, uh, the ending. That was, that was, we want to make the audience really buy it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way they were even sitting and standing, we kept yeah. going back and forth and looking at how they do it. So I really appreciate all of your contributions and help there on that. So mm -hmm. everybody, once again, it was a great cast. Great, great show. Uh, I miss it. I miss working with you, and that's yeah. why I keep trying to keep these things alive. And can I also say that you're you're very modest. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you really are in real life, but you have been in this. <laughs> um, I joke around. I, I, I play modest. Well. Yeah. Yeah. But but I was going to say. I mean, I I think you did set the tone for people feeling comfortable to bring things in. You really mm -hmm. invited us to be part of this process. I think you left your own ego outside the door, which mm -hmm. was really nice, so that we never felt like we were, mm -hmm. you know, gonna step on toes mm -hmm. or anything like that. But you also reacted honestly to things, mm -hmm. and I, I think that that allowed this process to happen. So well, thank I you. thank you for thank that. You. Mm -hmm. and, I, and that's what I think ACT is about. Uh, mm -hmm. What we try to do is uh, put on a good show, mm -hmm. entertain the audience, but also make it a really good, collaborative, fun experience for the participants. Because mm -hmm. if we do that, Everybody wins, right? The audience gets a good product. The actors are happy. Hopefully, you guys will come back and another production that we do sometime. Direct, write, act, and so I think if you create that environment, keep that environment. Wonderful people like yourselves and, and others will be come, coming back and coming to see our show. Yeah. So thank you so much thank for a so lot much. of things. Uh, being great casts, but coming down tonight on this nice, nice summer night. Um, and thank you coming down for co-hosting yeah, for Katie. Thanks. Appreciate it. Pleasure. And uh, we'll be back next month for the next episode of Behind the Curtain, the cast of The Connection. Thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm.